No matter how strong your visual kung fu is, your video's impact can really suffer if viewers can't hear your dialogue clearly. Now, for the record, clear dialogue always, always, always begins with a good recording in a good room with a good microphone. And once you've captured a good recording, there's one technique above all others that separates the pros from the amateurs. Stick around and learn how the secret of vocal compression can turn you into an audio production ninja. I'm David Power, and this is a two-ish minute power tip. First of all, what is compression? In simple terms, compression is the process of reducing the dynamic range of an audio signal. That is, reducing the difference between a signal's loudest parts and its quietest parts. Fair enough, but why would you want to reduce dynamic range? Well, reducing dynamic range improves the intelligibility of your audio under a wide range of listening conditions. For instance, when I play this dialogue clip, this is the quiet part of the clip, and this is the loud part of the clip. Notice how the quiet section on the left is a little more difficult to hear than the louder section on the right. And that would be especially true if the dialogue were later mixed with a music track or if someone was listening to it through earbuds on a noisy bus or subway. Now, we might try to solve this problem by simply turning up the gain by 10 decibels, but as soon as we do that, the loud section starts to clip. Compression allows us to reduce the volume of the loud sections without affecting the volume of the quiet sections. Then, we can turn up the overall volume of the entire track without the loud parts clipping. Here's the compressor module inside Isotope Nectar 3. Now, this module has a number of parameters, but we'll only focus on threshold and ratio for this example. Threshold is measured in decibels, and in Nectar, it's controlled by clicking and dragging this horizontal bar up or down. Threshold tells the compressor the level at which you consider an input signal to be loud. If your threshold is too high, your compressor will never kick in, and therefore, it won't have any impact on your signal. And if it's too low, it'll reduce the volume of all of your audio, both the quiet parts and the loud parts, and that essentially defeats the purpose of using a compressor in the first place. Ratio tells the compressor how much to reduce the incoming signal when it exceeds the threshold you've set. With Nectar's default value of two and a half to one, an incoming signal that's five decibels above the threshold will be reduced or turned down by three decibels. And a signal that's 10 decibels above the threshold will be reduced by six decibels, and so on. So let's start with the threshold slider all the way at the top and with the compressor's dial and button controls at their default values. Now, when I play audio, the gray trace represents the strength or volume of the input signal. And as I slowly pull the threshold control the downward, notice that as I approach the peaks of the input waveform, two things happen. First, you'll see an orange line near the top of the screen. This is known as the gain reduction trace, and it's showing us where compression is happening and how much compression is happening. The second thing to notice is the small meter here on the right of the floating control window. At the very bottom of the meter, you'll see a number in decibels representing the amount of gain reduction that's happening each time the threshold is exceeded. The lower I pull the threshold slider, the more compression I introduce. For dialogue like this, I normally target three-ish decibels of gain reduction, but you may need more or less, depending on the type of material you're producing. At any rate, don't hesitate to play around with the threshold, ratio, and other parameters and see what works best for your audio. Listen, you can't hurt anything or anyone by turning knobs on a compressor plugin. So don't hesitate to get in there and play around. Crank each parameter to extreme values and get a feel for how it impacts your dialogue. Experimentation is the absolute best way I know of to improve your skills at this stuff. That's it for now. If you found this tutorial helpful, you know what to do. Once again, I'm David Power, and I'll see you in the next Power Tip.